Yeah, the vitriol was surprising. I thought it was just a logical observation of if you do this, I cannot, if you increase the cost of production, it's going to mean fewer writing jobs. And then we have all these articles coming out about writers talk, describing how it's harder now than ever before. It seems logical. I think they're not used to people because what is a union? A union has power because if you cross the picket line, if you go against them, you, they will treat you differently. That's how they have power. That's how they keep, keep people in line. Because it's this group agreeing to operate as a unit. It's group think at its very definition. So I think there was some, oh, someone saying something against this, how dare you aspect, which, which is why many of the tweets were just personal. What are your credits? oh, you're a failure, then you don't get to talk about this, but they didn't contend with any specific logic at all. The model out of film school, you go, like, everyone went to either Atlanta, New York, or LA. And they go job to job, struggle to pay rent, play the game until they can get in the union, and then they're in that union for life. For me, I was like, that's not... I don't want to play that game, and that's fine for those that do. Now, the students that have done the best are those in makeup, for example, are the ones that are working on the largest, most frequent project, because that's a niche. It's, um, it's a good way to being a sound designer. So, somebody who's recording sound on set, that's a good one. It's small, it's unique, it's, it's, it's important. Uh, but there is that gig to gig game that you have to battle through to even get to. And that's so then you can understand the mindset of you battle your way through it, you finally get into that union. That's why they're willing to fight tooth and nail to defend it and not speak against it. And how dare you post something on X that calls any of this out, says that any of what we're picketing for is wrong. There's that, so this emotional vitriol comes from the journey itself having to battle your way into it. You're, you're never going to break ranks from it and acknowledge to your detriment you're not going to acknowledge the flaws even as you participate in it because you've come so far to get to that point. And I can understand that. But perhaps be willing to engage in the conversation. Don't just dismiss the person as, oh, they just want to have someone as important as me on their podcast. So I'm just going to tweet at them instead. <laughs> it's like, do you want to talk or not? You know what I mean? It's... And if you're going to do so, don't make it ad hominem. Don't just say, oh, these are your credits? Well, you're clearly a failure because these credits weren't made within the studio system. It's like, I'm happy to articulate my own experiences. And what about, I thought you were a champion of independent film. I thought you were a, cha a champion of artistic vision and trying new things. But you haven't even watched these movies and you're dismissing them as a failure because they weren't made within the studio system? or the industry as you define it? How do you define the industry? Why does your definition get to override it? The fact that you even have such a concrete definition might be problematic in itself. So he's saying this to me, you then proceed to make it explicitly clear that you don't understand the first thing about television production or what directors on TV shows actually do, or that TV and film fundam are fundamentally different. I'm not sure how I make that clear or how that so the difference between television and film, the executive producer is the showrunner. So Mad Men, Matt Weiner, is the showrunner and the creator of the idea who's running the writer's room. And then they bring in a different director for each episode, which is fundamentally different than doing a feature film, where you have usually an array of producers and the amount of producers can be problematic as well, given that there's, the title gets thrown around, executive, associate producer, I can be attached to financiers. It is different in that sense that the, so Matt Weiner is running the story and I even had the opportunity to meet Matt Weiner in, on the set of Mad Men and he discussed about his process where if someone in his writer's room is able to write an episode that he doesn't have to rewrite over 50% of, he will then give them the credit. So he's still that consistent vision. So he would be the equivalent of the director of the creative vision.
regardless of who's directing the episode, he's that consistent final word, if you would. Which I think would actually go back to supporting the argument of why it wouldn't be good to have three people trying to compete for the final word on set, mid-production, especially. If you want to do that in the writer's room, that's fine. As a producer, time is money. And yeah, it was, a, it was sort of a staple, the idea that you don't want things changing midstream. You don't. So if, a, if an actor is going to wish to rewrite a line on set, hopefully they would do that prior to the day of, when you have everyone's, you have all the lighting in place, everyone's standing around, you've got 50 people, probably more on set, and the clock is ticking and every moment is money. To then have the writer, okay, but again, even if you do have that scenario, I think that's between the director and the actor, not three writers who are gonna powwow and then bring in the, because then it becomes three writers working with the director and the actor. You're down to five cooks in the kitchen when time is money. I could understand that process in pre-production for sure, but so logically, I, I don't know how anyone could, <laughs> logically, that's a recipe for disaster if time is money. Yeah, I experienced how rewrites affect because I was responsible for every dollar that went through and I had to, I was the only producer. And I wrote the screenplay around the production, what would be financially feasible. So if there was a rewrite and there were, I was rewriting it based off of production, what would be feasible. Not, there was no way I could have diverted to three other writers to solve it, I, because I knew the resources we had, because I, I designed the movie around locations I grew up, <laughs> where I grew up. So I knew the people, the locals, we have access to this house, this house, things that those three writers are not gonna know about. So I'm trying to provide a, a specific example from my experience. There's no way they could have written that, re, done a rewrite to solve those specific problems because they're not aware of those specific production problems. Because like, you don't have an intimate understanding of this location in the area where we're filming, which is what made the entire production possible for that budget level. If you were a writer, wouldn't it make more sense to, to make it as easy as possible for you to take what's in your head and put it on screen? Which would mean less steps, less requirements, less mandated processes, because if the higher the barrier to entry, the more, that, the more hoops that financier, that executive, that producer is going to have to jump through to, to make your vision possible, the less likely they're going to be to engage in it. The more likely they're going to be to err on the side of pre-established IP. My point is that this is actually not in your self-interest, which is why we're seeing writers r struggling and writing articles about how they're struggling now. Because when you put the union ahead of you, you're actually, you think you're acting out of your self-interest, but you're not. And this goes to another comment they were saying to Stephen Martini. He goes, damn, so this is about writers asking for too much money for their work from corporate CEOs? How, I'm not sure how you read that from that video. Writers asking for too much money from their corporate CEOs? No, it's about mandating union regulations upon the creative process. I would say this is because I care. I do think, I mean, I work, I am, I am a writer. I care about writers. Like if, if you, what is, so that's the vitriol doesn't quite make sense because I feel like the logic I'm trying to present is actually in the best, because I, is actually in the best interest of writers. So if, if you're a writer, this is actually what I think is going to benefit you more in the long run. So then to say, oh, you hate writers is completely illogical. The, the short answer is, is choice. It's not saying you have to, if you're gonna bring on another writer, you have to have six. It's to say, freedom of enterprise. If you wanna do it with two people, three people, go for it because we want more people making movies. And we wanna make it as easy for you to do that as possible. 